Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we're going to be working on this piece that's behind me. It doesn't look like much now because I'm just getting started on it, um, but this is actually a really cute piece. This is a game table, so when you open up the doors on the front, um, it actually has racks in it and each one has different games in it. So this is a tic-tac-toe game. Um, I've scuff sanded it up really good so it's a little rough right now but I think when I'm done it's going to be really fun. This piece was actually in my own home. We've had this upstairs in our bonus room for a while. My kids just haven't used it. Um, it was kind of just a plain gray finish so it's really cute and I loved the table but I'm going to dress it up a little bit and then I don't know I was thinking of getting rid of it but maybe I'm going to love it too much to be able to let it go. We'll have to see. Um, my finishes on this one, um, I let it sit in my workspace for a while to see if it kind of inspired me and nothing was coming to me. And then I remembered I had this beautiful paper. And so I'm going to incorporate this and I actually pulled my color inspiration from this. And this is a great way that you can find color inspiration when you're kind of stuck on a direction is look for a product that you want to use. Papers are great inspiration, transfers. Um, it could even be a fabric in your house that you want to match or something like that. So um, in this case, I'm going to pull all my inspiration from the colors on this paper. I'm going to use this paper somewhere special on this one, and I think it's going to be a really cute piece. Um, so you guys, I hope you'll enjoy this video. Click that subscribe button, stick around, and let's get started. Here's where I started on this cute little game table. Overall, it's in pretty good condition. It's got some nicks and dings, um, no markings on this one, but I would say it's made uh, by a company similar to Bombay and Company. Because of the really slick finish, I needed to give the entire body a thorough scuff sanding, and I went ahead and sanded this top down to the bare wood. My inspiration from this piece is coming from this paper, and so I pulled out some colors by Wise Out Paint that match my paper. I scuff sanded as much as possible with my power sander, but this had a lot of molded details, and so I went ahead and came back with a surf prep rad pad and just scuffed those areas by hand. Once my piece was thoroughly scuffed so I can make sure that my paint has good grip to it, I went ahead and gave this piece a thorough cleaning. It definitely looks worse now than when I started, but this is going to be a great base to lay some paint on. I'm going to be using Wiseal paint, and my closest color match to my paper was the color Abyss. And then I chose River Rock to blend into it, and that's because these are just a shade off of each other, so this is going to be a really nice subtle blend. I always say when choosing colors to blend that choose colors that are closer in tone. The closer together they are, the easier they're going to be to blend. And since this, these are just a shade off of each other, this is going to be a really uh, easy color combination to put together. I usually do a three color blend. On this one, I'm just using two colors because this is a fairly small piece and I didn't want to overwhelm it by doing too many colors in such a small area. I started out by laying on my darker color, which is abyss in this case, and I just made, basically made a frame around the square of my piece. Then I'm going to come into this inner square and I'm going to go ahead and lay on my river rock. My goal here is to make the river rock look like a highlight in the center of the piece. You can see the subtle shade difference between these two colors right away and what a good blend these are going to be. I would highly recommend this combination if you like these colors or are a fan of the blues. This is a great combination to start out with to practice your blending on. This is just my base coat, so I went ahead and brushed that highlight in the center into the outer edge. It's not perfect, but again, this is just my base, and this is what I look like at the end of my first coat. Let's come back and repeat the same process with my second coat, only this time I'm going to slow it down and pay a little more attention to the transition between my blend because this is my final coat of paint. Before I started on this coat of paint, I went ahead and just put a sealer over the raw wood on the top. I really like the light blonde wood color, and so I'm just going to leave that in its natural tone. And with the sealer on there, I don't have to worry that if I get any paint up onto the edges, it'll just wipe away easily. This is a repeat of the same process I used on my first coat. So I'm going to start off by framing out the outer edges in my darker color, which is the abyss, leaving that space in the center nice and open. I am using a little bit of water on this coat, and that's because I have the grip of the chalk paint underneath it. And so that just helps my brush glide a little bit easier. I'm actually using very little paint on this coat because I got the coverage I needed with my first coat. This is just to really perfect my blend. 
What I mean by perfecting the blend is I'm just going to work those transitions together to a little bit smoother. I do that by brushing straight through the center, brushing around those edges, making sure that I work those colors into each other. Anytime I feel like I need to add uh, more or less of a color, I go ahead and bring that back with the brush. I do have a brush for each color, and then I'm going to use a dry neutral brush for blending as needed. Moving on to the front of my piece, my base of the piece is a solid color, so I'm just going to go ahead and brush on a coat of Abyss in my solid color, making sure I use my brush to get into all of those details. I try to keep my brush strokes as smooth as possible. I use a little bit of water anytime I feel drag in my paint, and then I'm just going to make sure that I get full coverage on the base of my piece. When it comes to blending around the molded details on the front of these doors, I actually think that blending over moldings is a little bit easier because it'll have a tendency to hide any flaws or imperfections in your blending. So I'm going to use a little bit of water. Oh, here I got a little bit up onto my top, but it's already sealed, so no worries there. And I'm going to repeat that process by brushing on my darker color around the outer edges again. I'm using a synthetic bristle brush. These are the Klingon S50 brushes. I also get these from Wiseall. There will be a link for these in the description for this video. Um, I feel like these brush on a nice, smooth, even coat, and then I just use a little bit of water anytime I feel like I need it. Once I've got all those outer edges brushed on, I'm going to come back with my second brush. I have a brush for each color, and I'm going to brush into the center of these doors a little bit of my River Rock. That's my lighter color. Only I'm going to let it uh, come outside that inner frame, and so it softly blends into the abyss, abyss around the outer edges. I try to work quickly because I want to move these colors together while my paint is still wet. This is a fairly small area, but anytime I'm working in larger areas, I just work in small areas at a time and I break it apart into smaller pieces. Um, that little bit of water can keep the paint fresh, so I have a lot enough time to work it together. You can see here how I carry that river rock into the outer edges outside of that frame and that just helps it look like a soft glow instead of a really firm hard line inside those frames. Let's go ahead and finish up the blend on these doors and then I've got a little bit of surprise for the inside of this piece. My surprise for the inside of this piece is going to be my paper. This is the paper that inspired the entire look. I'm going to cover the entire inside of the piece with this. That includes all of the drawers for this piece and inside of the doors. I start off with my paper by doing a basic dry fit and that just means I held it up to the drawers on my piece and with my fingers I marked a basic line where I need to cut my paper. I make sure I cut it slightly too large for the piece just because I'd rather have too much paper than not enough. Once I'm happy with the cut on my piece, I'm going to go ahead and back butter this paper using some wallpaper adhesive. The reason I'm back buttering this paper is because it's a fairly thick paper, and anytime I have a thicker paper, I like to soften it up by back buttering the paper. It also creates a, a higher bond in between my surface and the paper. So once my paper is back buttered, I'm going to brush on that same wallpaper paste onto the front of my drawer. I did go ahead and paint the front of my drawers because sometimes you'll have little edges that will appear underneath your paper and I want those to look seamless with my paper. Then I'm going to find my 90 degree corner, match my paper up, and I'm going to press it down into place using this decoupage tool. I press my paper down starting in the center and working my way out to the edges because it's going to push out any excess wallpaper paste to the very edges of my paper. And then I'm just going to take a really sharp razor blade and I'm going to trim the paper along the edges of my drawer. Once my wallpaper paste is nice and dry, I'll come back with a sanding block and I'll just lightly sand the edges to make sure I have a nice clean edge on my paper. I don't do this while this paper is wet because it can have a tendency to tear the paper when you're doing a wet application of decoupage. When I put my drawer in the body of my piece, you can see how my pattern lines up evenly all the way down the front. I repeated the same decoupage process on all of my drawers and then onto the back sides of my doors too and my pattern lines up all the way across. Um, now I need to go ahead and clean the hinges because I took these uh, doors off, but I had painted them when I was painting the body of my piece. It's a really easy thing to do. All I did was soak them in a little bit of vinegar and water and the paint virtually melts off. A little bit of wire brush is going to remove any residue from those hinges and they're good as new. 
Now to the body, I want to add some detailing with waxes. This is going to shade around the edges and it's going to look like a third color in my blend. I'm using a small natural bristle artist brush and just running a bead of wax along the edges of all my moldings. Once I've got this bead of wax on, I'm going to work it slightly out into the body of my piece and it's going to create this soft halo around those moldings. I use shading with waxes on most every piece that I do and I find that it just adds a little bit of drama and then it's also going to bring attention to all of the details that are on this piece. This piece has incredible moldings and, and detailing and so I really want to emphasize that with some shadowing effects. So I think of this like the eyeshadow and the eyeliner on my piece and I originally started out with the eyeliner which is that really thin bead of wax that I just brushed on with that natural bristle artist brush and now I'm going to come smudge it out and this is going to look like a smudgy eye effect. This is, would be my eyeshadow on the piece. For this smudging I just like a soft natural bristle brush, um, any brush will do and I just sort of fluff it along the edges of that wax and it naturally wants to smudge it out from the edges. This smudging of the waxes adds to the overall effect of the blended look on the piece. It's not always just done in paint. In this case, I'm using waxes and paint to create the full effect. So while I have that really fun paper on the inside of my piece, I also want to add an additional detail to the outside. And I chose this uh, transfer from Redesign with Prima. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out to fit the insides of these doors perfectly. This is just one little strip of my transfer, so I'm still going to have two other sheets and then the uh, scrap left over from this that I can use on other pieces. I fit my cutout to the inside of my door. I'm going to rub it on using the transfer tool that comes in the package with the transfer. Once I've gone over the entire piece, I'm going to come back and find a loose edge. And sometimes you need either a fingernail or I'll use a little razor knife to find an edge that I can lift up just enough because it's inside of this molding. Once I find that little edge, I can start pressing down and pulling my backing sheet up to release my transfer onto the piece. If I can't find an edge that's been adhered enough, I'll just come back and rub over the top of it one more time, and then this time it's gonna work and I can pull up that backing sheet. With that backing sheet all removed, I want to go ahead and burnish over my transfer. And burnish just means that I want to rub over it using a soft cloth. In this case, I'm using an old t-shirt. And this rubs down any edges, gets out any air bubbles that are underneath the tr transfer so it seats perfectly. Now I want to go ahead and emphasize that gold that's on my transfer with a little bit of gold gilding wax. This is redesigned with Prima Decor Wax and the color is called Eternal. I'm just going to apply the decor wax using my finger around all of the moldings on this piece and here is where I ended up with all my decoupage done and the gold on the outside. My last step in this is to go ahead and seal my finishes so I'm going to spray over this using some Wiesel varnish in satin. I want to make sure I coat the paper on the inside of this piece as well. I gave it two coats of my satin clear coat and here is my final project. I just staged this with a simple plant, some gold frames on the wall to bring out the gold in my piece, and look at the inside of it. That's my favorite part. You guys, I need your help on this one. I don't know if I can let it go or if I need to put this one back upstairs in our bonus room. I just love it too much. So what do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find links for everything I used in the description for this post. As always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click that subscribe button.